Hi all, I have another absolutely amazing game of Leave the Chess to show you this morning from David Grosvenor, Fast and Furious, 2 minutes for 40 moves. This is Komodo 9.02 against Leela ID 11041. Let's have a look. B3, the book moves given, so Nimzo Larson attack. We have now D6 here, C4, G6. So this was the end of the book given to both of the engines. Bishop e2, bishop g7. Now we have knight f3. And Leela innovates here actually in the opening. This position is still in chess based live book territory. And quite often knight f6 is played or f5. So that's very interesting. Innovation here with knight h6. Now white castles, black castles, knight c3, f5. So the knight can claw back to the center, knight f7, and then maybe later use the g5 square. So a very interesting idea. d4, e4, knight d2, a5, a3. Now g5, queen c2, <clears throat> knight e7, rook fd1, knight f7, Knight f1. Now knight g6 here is played. Uh, now things are getting really interesting. So Leela's building up the pressure behind the pawns. White plays h3 here and there's a great move. Now a great attacking move. g4 is played which opens up the queen to go into h4. So it's a pawn sacrifice. hg queen h4. And now, yeah, really interesting stuff here. White's actually tried to undermine a bit the center taking here to try and weaken e4. It seems very you know logical to do that. If white plays g3, the probably the, the absolute best move is queen h6 in this position. For example, give you a sample here. This is really dangerous, this whole thing with knight takes f4, rook takes f4, and black's attack seems to be crashing through. Uh, this is like really vicious as an example. On instead of queen h6, if queen h3 instead then actually this might not be so clear. You can see that white actually gets a chance to get back into the game a bit here. But even in this continuation, white's counterplay, it's not that strong. So black could start building up again with a big advantage from here. So that's interesting. It's a very good attacking position already, basically, uh, on g3. So g takes f5. And now a, a really fantastic move. I wonder if you can guess it. So the center has been undermined. E4 has been undermined. So you might be able to. That's a good clue for what Leela plays here. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you play in this position? Okay, knight g5 holding that e4 point. Okay, so you might think, well, hang on, this knight's hanging. Knight g3 was actually played. If if taking. Then queen takes f2. There's a really key resource here, I wonder if you can guess, which justifies the whole thing. Okay. Five seconds. Okay. Bishop h3 is a real crusher in this position. So, for example, g takes, knight takes, threatens queen g1, checkmate. Knight h2 parries that, but now queen g3 threatens knight f2 checkmate. And if rook f1, now not knight f2 allowing an exchange attack, but rook f2 is crushing. Uh, absolutely exterminating white, threatening queen g2, queen takes h2. And if rook takes, then knight takes. So that's absolutely winning. So really fascinating uh, lines there. Uh, gory lines. <laughs> so knight g3 uh, was played, not taking, yeah. Uh, so now here bishop takes f5 so still holding that e4 one two three one two three still holding e4 here bishop h5 on knight takes f5 you might wonder this position you might want to okay what if white tactically tries to break out a bit with this this position is hopeless because a rook takes f2 the knight actually supports rook takes f2 and winning the queen is, is brilliant as one might expect so Nothing too clever can be played for white. Yeah, it's bishop h5. 
was played. And the central point is really reinforced again. So really reinforcing e4, overprotecting e4, Nimzovich in overprotection. That would be his favorite scale, square with black. With white would be e5, this central point which clamps down counterplay. Now bishop h3, really another fantastic move. Really dynamic, aggressive. <laughs> There's Metanov would be uh, proud here. So if g takes here, what happens? Knight takes. This is just absolutely uh, devastating for white. Check and taking a big advantage for black. So very beautiful stuff, attacking stuff. And actually, there's a, there's something of great beauty emerging now. Rook f3 because that pawn's pinned. <laughs> so black is building up even more pressure now. From that central point grows a light square occupation in general. Knight c e2 is played here. Again, just to show, uh, g takes is, uh, is loses the queen right here. Knight takes h3 check. White would have to give up the queen really. That's hopeless. If white doesn't, this position there's a fantastic resource. Knight hf4 check. So both knights really help each other. Put the nail in the coffin here. Rook takes g3, and here staircase to win the bishop all with check. So not taking the bishop means all with check to keep the staircase going. E3 check. This is absolutely crushing this position. This variation as an example. Checkmate could result. So uh, knight c e2, <clears throat> rook e f8, building up the pressure. Bishop c3, and now David Grove the <laughs> was mega excited about this game and in particular this position because of the aesthetic impression it creates and I agree with him what is this is Leela like an attacking chess artist as well uh, trolling us all with this position because <laughs> look at this have you ever seen every single piece is on the g-file is fully occupied every part of the g-file here and this fetix look at black's pieces they're tightly bound visually. It's it's a very, very strange position. If you're on Instagram, uh, could you could you Instagram this position? You can you can snip the screen. Please Instagram it. Uh, please put chessworld.net to help promote the chess world site if you do Instagram it. Or KC Chess or Kings Crusher. Yeah. Put a few tags on it. But this is a beautiful position to behold. In its own right, just to step back here. So Lila's innovative knight h6 actually helps create this formation because the knight bounced from f to f7 to g5. So just from that point of view, if we can reach this position, knight h6 should be seriously considered. It's it is beautiful and it's functional. That's the thing. You can guarantee that with with um, yeah. Well, usually with AI, that there's going to be a functional aspect to the beauty. The pieces really mean something here. Uh, not just pretty. So, okay, we're going to have to move on from this position now. <laughs> Look forward to your Instagram posts. So, bishop takes g4 is played. On bishop takes g6, hg is really vicious here because uh, black can actually step out with the king to play rook h8 and, and threaten queen h2. So, queen one, rook h8, for example, this position. Uh, is just going to be devastating. Queen takes g3. Queen takes f3 is possible because there's a, a strong mating net now. So absolutely beautiful stuff. So yeah, bishop takes g4. We've still got every part of the g-file occupied. Bishop takes a5. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, taking a pawn on the queen side when the house is on fire is something to spar off. Uh, mentioned in the quote, uh, it's not usually that important, such pawns. So h5, just getting on with the attack. Bishop takes. On g takes here, you might be wondering. Rook takes. This position is just really, as you might expect, really quite crushing. Knight f5 puts a load of pressure on the position. Knight takes e3 check, and then it's all falling to bits. Yeah, this position is all falling to bits for white. So uh, rook takes, sorry, bishop takes c7. 
h4 bishop takes just offering the knight and yeah rook takes f2 this is just really just crashing through giving up the two rooks for the queen you might think that's a good deal for black but actually this bishop's now harassed and again <laughs> taken off <laughs> it's driven off this diagonal <laughs> which means g3 is now weaker so guess what Leela now plunges to, to, to attack g3 so bishop h4 to try and pin that g3 knight now why the bishops away bit of amusement there chasing the bishop now bishop h4 literally making this idea more effective by first chasing the bishop so rook takes h4 is played here uh, the threat is queen f5 check so if, you know for example here queen f5 and uh, taking so rook takes knight takes and now queen g4 now this is this is materially uh very good for black it's just rook against queen but there's a load of pawns over here so let's just see how the game finished we'll carry it on uh so putting pressure on e3 there the pawns are encouraged a little bit until this point now there's another big threat of taking the bishop uh and also of course that would weaken uh g3 to take the bishop off so the king's actually covered the bishop's <laughs> uh escape here so g3 is again this is <laughs> this is quite a comical exercise because yeah the bishop was returned back to the diagonal only for the king now to stop it from holding g3 if we look at what's just happened here this this maneuver well was there was a point to it to catch the bishop <laughs> so now it's really crunch time it will re reach crunch time for g3 so actually we have knight takes f5 this makes the mopping up job very easy now this position it's just a mopping up job queen against rook yep it's uh we reach a position where both engines think the evaluation is too high so it gets basically adjudicated for a, a win soon for black this 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 position is very very strong for black it's going to be uh eventually winning so it was adjudicated as a win here for black uh, so a very aesthetic looking attack uh brilliant position to behold there with the g file Every, every piece on the G file, I thought. I agree with David Grosvenor on that. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as me, this this attacking masterpiece. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.